Zack De La Rocha, Rage Against the Machine. If I had to choose a vocalist that really opened my eyes, it would be Zack De La Rocha. I call him my gateway vocalist because it wasn't until I started to unpack the way that he does what he does that I was able to make more sense of what other singers who were singing melodies were doing. And if you've been following my channel for a little while, you've probably stumbled upon the video, Trick Yourself Into Singing Higher. That mindset, that approach really came about and was inspired by my analysis of Zach De La Rocha. And even though in the moment he's just going for it and not thinking about it, it's just all out aggression. We, when we really unpack what he's doing, can hear the foundations of mixed voice, can learn a lot about support, and realize above everything else that the core of a great singing voice is actually a confident and well-understood speaking voice. And if you'd like to go deeper with that concept, I encourage you to join my free vocal course linked below. There is nothing that will develop your voice more as a whole, both singing and aggressive yelling or screaming, than understanding your speech, understanding how to make your speaking voice work and let it do things you never thought it could possibly do. So I encourage you to click that link below. All right, let's get into some Zach De La Rocha. This is Zach De La Rocha speaking. How are you? It kind of happened. It was spontaneous. It wasn't a lot of thought put into it, you know? Now, before we get into this first example, I'd just like to remind all of us, including myself, that we're not imitating for the sake of imitating or to try to sound like Zach De La Rocha. We are listening we are picking up on some of the things that he does and we are injecting them in our own voices. So let's not be critical of the sounds that we make when we're working with samples inspired or that are actually Zach De La Rocha. The point isn't to sound like him. The point is to sing like him or do things in the way that he does them and infuse those things in our own voices. It can only help us improve. Okay. Here's the first example. We're going to start with a lower, less aggressive sound and work our way up to more aggressive sounds. So here we go. Now listen to his timbre here and then we'll unpack this a little bit more. Let's do the first one first. Some of those, some of those. Now there's a high amount of compression even in his lower... Uh, resonance here some of those that work forces. so he's not just some of those that work forces or even in the same sort of pitch area some of those that work forces some of those that work no it's some of those so if we really extreme it that it is some of those that work forces some of those that work forces and then of course there's you know various speech patterns and and uh not really accents, but the way that he pronounces some of his words. Some of those that work forces. But even in this state where he's lower and has this pent up energy, there's this idea with his words that he, some of those, some of those, everything is thrown out of his mouth. Uh, you've heard me talk about the, the vomiting principle before. Absolutely. Zach De La Rocha vomits when he speaks, when he sings, when he phonates. Some of those that work. And I'm going to use the word sing because it's functioning in that role. Some of those that work forces. Some of those that work forces. Some of those that work forces. So it's that idea that we're compressing and we're letting air through, but we're holding air back with that area above our larynx. Now, let's move on to this next sub phrase. On the same are the same, are the same. Are the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn cross. Same. Are the same. Same. That, that note or that word is really 
put through his nose. If you listen to are the, are, are, are the same, are the same that burn craw, are the same that burn crosses, are the same that burn craw. And then listen to how he moves his sound around, even in this area. Now, he's not thinking about this, but initially, we have to kind of think about how he's doing what he's doing. He's moving his resonance around in his face. This is really important to understand the uh, foundations of his style. Uh, uh, if I were to exaggerate what he's doing, are the same, are the same, are the same that burn craw crosses, are the same that burn crosses. Say, say through his nose, say, say, craw, ha, crow, crow. You've heard me talk about crow before. There's all these things happening. And what this is, is it's not him intentionally going, I want this to sound this way. I want this to, it's that he is into it and he has enough understanding about feel that he can move it around and it generates different sounds. Really neat. On the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn crosses. And we can uh, experiment with various levels of compression there too. Are the same that burn crosses. Compression to the point of, of grit, of breakup. Again, I'm using the area above my larynx. <sighs> Are the same that burn crosses. Are the same that burn crosses. <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of ridiculous, but we want to be able to understand the range that we have. Next. Some of those that work forces. Okay, now he gets up in his intensity. Some of those. Same thing, but he's raising in pitch as he's getting up in intensity. Some of those. Some of those. Some of those. Some of those that work forces. Some of those that work forces. I can't express enough how important a handle on compression is in this style. Compression is the key to being able to scale that grit and aggression. Some of those that work forces. Forces! Some of those that work forces. Draw the same that burn crosses. Draw the same that burn crosses. Draw the same that burn crosses. Crosses! Now, it's important that we understand as we're climbing in pitch, we're also climbing in compression. This is where these things act in tandem and why it's so cool to explore this sort of vocalizing before we try to do it in an actual like note by note context. Draw the same that burn are the same are the same and if we just take that and we 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 say the words are the same we can scale that all the way up. Are the same that burn. Or let's let's get that that vocalizing, vomiting. Are the same. 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 Are the same that burn crosses. And as you're dialing it in, let yourself crack a little bit. That's okay. But what we're doing is we're going up in pitch. And we're adding compression at the same time, even though we're not going for any particular note. This is an awesome thing to do if you want to work on expanding your range, because you start to understand how your voice feels in different pitch areas without being tied to a note. Not the same that burn crosses! Now, we also have to have a discussion about channeling a bit of mixed voice here. He, as he grows in his pitch, his timbre changes. It's no longer in that primary speech resonance, and you can hear it starting to happen here. He's not, Oh, the same that burn crosses! It's going all the way up! Ah, oh, the same that burn! And we're going we're gonna to get into some of that a little bit more, where he's even higher. We have to understand how to do that. And I've talked about this on the channel before. It's this idea that we're using compression, and we are taking on the role of the dying cat. Ah! But we're using a ton of support. And again, if you don't understand how your support is supposed to feel in this context, be sure to click the link below and join my free vocal course. I'll help you dial that in so that this becomes something that you can do more naturally. Row are the same. Are the same. Row are the same. Crosses. 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 
and then we add that compression-based grit where we're taking the area above our larynx, our false chord area, and we are using that area to produce our grit. Not in our voice box, not below our voice box. What the same that burn crosses! <laughs> we can go really high and we want to be able to do that so that we can tailor our intensity and our pitch at the same time. Next. For wearing the bads, they're your chosen whites! Now, lyrics say the chosen whites. He's I think he's saying yeah. They're yeah, they're your chosen. And and that's just part of that that nice rhythmic rap style he's got going on there. Love it. Now let's listen to For Wearing the Badge! For Wearing the Badge! There's this, and I'm I'm doing a little darker. We want to lighten it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it clean for, for wearing. Uh, let's be as obnoxious as we can and as bright as we can so that we can lighten this up. Even though he's aggressive here, he's also lighter. Lighter than he was in the end of the last example. And he's kind of in a groove with the words. And then badge introduces that compression-based uh, false chord grit. For wearing the badge! Badge! <laughs> For wearing the badge! 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 They're your chosen whites! Now listen to what he does on whites. White, it's up in pitch just a little bit. Chosen whites! Chosen whites! Now, what I would recommend for developing the flexibility to do this with your voice, this expressiveness, is I would let yourself crack when you try to do this a few times so that you start learning where your voice's limits are. They're your chosen whites! They're your chosen whites! They're your chosen whites! Now, when you do that, you start feeling, okay, well, I can go this high with that pitch before I start to break. This is really valuable, especially if you've seen some of my other videos. You can start understanding how to get even grittier, even more aggressive when you start understanding that break point. But if you don't want to go there, if you don't want to get so broken up, you at least know where your ceiling is before you need to start injecting more mix into your voice. They're your chosen white! They're your chosen white! I can do I can go all the way up if I want to without breaking. But it takes that intentionality of transferring resonances up to my head with the proper amount of support. For wearing the badge, they're your chosen whites! Next. Now here he's he's high. Yeah! Let's go up to that pitch. Bulls on parade! Get it clean first. And this is that mixed support mixed with support that I've been talking about, brought on by this idea of the dying cat. But listen to his his grit. This is an extreme form of compression. Some people call this hypercompression with mixed voice, even though we're not going for any sort of particular pitch. There's definitely pitch, right? Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Now, that's grittier than what he's doing, but we want to be able to go there. Let's do it cleaner. Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! <laughs> we can really cartoonify it, but if we can understand how to do that and Bulls on parade! If we can understand how to do both of those things, then we can get in the middle. Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! And have any sort of middle ground that might might sound cool with our own voices. And he's so gritty but present with his pitch. I like that. I'm gonna try to get more of that. Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Bull, it's not ball. Bull. Bull! Bulls on parade! Bulls on parade! Good stuff. Next. Rally around the family! Pockets full of shells! Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Now, I like this a lot. This is... I've talked about this in 
Chester Bennington before, where we're bringing things as forward as possible and we're getting our, at the same time we're getting our lips out of the way, we're, we're baring our teeth and we're keeping everything somewhat closed, which is helping us place the resonance as forward as possible. Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Now, I, I probably, I know I look silly doing this uh, as, we're, as we're getting these, these sounds built, but I don't care. You shouldn't care either. If you want to learn about your voice and how it works, you have to stop caring. You have to stop going, oh, I'm going to look stupid, or I might sound stupid. I might make something that doesn't fit what I'm trying to do. Then you're going to fail. You have to be willing to lay down your pride in order to truly introspect, in order to truly learn. You have to try things. Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Let's talk about this grit. Rally around! That, if I, if I listen to what's happening from a feel perspective, I feel this sense of openness. Yeah, well supported head note. Yeah, 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 yeah. No pitch, no particular pitch necessary. Yeah. And then I feel this squeeze happening above my voice box. Yeah. You can get there by adding more compression. Yeah, rally around the family. Compression, the essence of compression is closing off the area above your larynx. Rally around the family! I like to start these clean to get that feel of that pitch and then add the compression in. Notice my, the, the volume isn't changing here. It's the intensity that's changing because of the compression. Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Rally around the family! Pocket full of shell! Pocket full of shell! Pocket full of shell! Bucket full of shell! Take that around in various areas of your range. Bucket full of shell! 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 Rally around the family! Bucket full of shell! Bucket full of shell! Next. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. I love looking at this kind of thing in the context of the other ones we've looked at. This is as close to his speech, pure speech, you're going to hear in any of these samples. No matter how hard you try. No matter how hard you try. To me, hearing this kind of stuff in the context of his other stuff, or watching interviews of guys like this, or Chris Cornell, or whatever, and hearing how they sing, and then hearing how they talk, it's huge for understanding. It's it's almost empowering. Wait, his voice doesn't sound all that different than my voice when I talk. But he's doing all these things that, that sound sort of unapproachable. They're not. You just have to understand what he's doing. Be able to analyze what he's doing and then put that in your own voice. No matter how hard you try. You no matter how hard you try, you can hear that there's not... A lot, no matter how hard you try, there's not compression going on. He's just, he's really just talking. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. Now listen to can't stop us now. There is more compression. There's more compression. There's more vomit going on. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. Yeah. So taking a phrase, you could take any phrase. You could take any phrase and you could start by just talking and then getting more and more aggressive. Of course, again, exaggerate it, learn the feel. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. As I go along in that phrase, I'm adding more and more compression. This allows me to be more aggressive and keep my pitch in relatively the same area. But this, hearing the speech in comparison or in contrast to the bulls on parade that to me is huge now there's that contrast right we've got no matter how hard you try to 
And electronic is singing electronic! Singing electronic! Singing electronic! And I'm cracking a little bit when I say tronic. That's fine as we're as we're figuring out how it fits into our own voice, but I'm gonna try to eliminate that. And I'm gonna do that by by thinking slide. I'm gonna sing an electro sing an electronic! I eliminated it. Sing an electronic chance! Sing an electronic chant! Sing an electronic chance like Sing an electronic! Sing an electronic chance like Sing an electronic chance like 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 Highly compressed teeth face out of the way teeth are bared sing an electronic sing an electronic chant sing an electronic chant and this is really neat i love exercises like this because you are changing pitch and you are going for what he's doing in terms of what his pitch is like but we're not pressured into notes such a great way to discover what your voice can do sing an Sing an electronic chant! Sing an electronic chant! Sing an electro! Sing an electronic chant! Now, what if you're a baritone? What if you're a bass? You can still do this stuff. You might not be able to get the exact timbre out of what's going on in this particular example, but you still have the same mechanisms. Chris Cornell is a baritone. Ian Thornley is a baritone. These guys have learned how to use mechanisms like this to get those really great high notes. And it works. So don't write this kind of singing off, this aggression, these techniques, hypercompression, mixed voice, don't write those off just because you're a baritone or a bass. Don't do it. Next. Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! This one, I love it because we're able to really focus on the the groove of the words. Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! And just experiment putting it in our own voice. Now move, sucker! 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 <laughs> now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! Do all sorts of things. Put a rhythm down and practice talking to the rhythm. Talking to the rhythm and making your voice do all sorts of things! Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! Lighten up! Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! Now move, sucker! I said move, sucker, 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 move, sucker! Fun and educational. Next. All of which are American dreams! Now, this is great because it's a contrast to what we just did. We're getting in the groove and he's just experimenting with what our voice can do. We get a chance to hear him in his aggressive, higher-pitched rap sounding voice without the constraints of rhythm and it helps us focus particularly on tone all of which are america all of which oh all of all of which 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 are american dreams all of which are american dreams all of which are American dreams! I love how he slows this down. This is at the very end of the song. Practice talking like this. This, now, I've talked about the Wicked Witch before. I'll get you, my pretty! I'll get you, my pretty! I talk about this in Tom York, uh, as he is the sedated witch. But here we have a non-sedated witch. I'll you I'll get you my pretty oh, all of which all of which are American dreams all of which 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 are American dreams I like how the pitch goes down just little by little all of which are American dreams all of which are American dreams 
It's very different than all of which are American dreams. All of which are even very different than all of which are American dreams. Right? If you're all of which are American dreams. All of which are American dreams. So cool. Let's see if we can grit that up even more while keeping the pitch integrity there as he has done. All of which, all of which. Let yourself crack. Get that grit more. What that cracking is, is it's your vocal folds opening up, letting more air into your false chord area, providing the accessibility of more grit. All of which, all of which are American dreams. All of which are American dreams. Dreams. All of which are American dreams. All of which are American dreams. All of which are American dreams. Now, all of this is based on what I've talked about in this video. Hyper compression, huge amounts of compression, understanding how support and head voice work in order to create a well-supported mixed head resonance or mixed voice and practicing that in the context of speech. Last one. I like this because it's kind of clean, but it's also in that mix. Do I need you? I need you. I need you. Ah, he slides up to it. I need you. I need you. You is very forward. Now, he, one thing that he's really good at, I mean, he's good at a lot of things, but he doesn't he doesn't mix his vowels. That would be a, a strong disservice to the style that he's going for. It's not, I need you, my witness. Nothing's all open. He's very, his diction is very, very good. His vowels are very intentional, very well formed. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Now here, I like to slide. Up. I need you. I need you. Going up in that nest. Ness. 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 I need you, my witness. I need you, my witness. It's almost like this chromatic walk up. I need you, my witness. I need you, my witness. And he's got that mild compression-based uh, grit or distortion. I'd call that. I, I would use the word distortion there because it's not quite. Yeah. <laughs> it's more. Yeah. Just a little bit of that. Yeah. Versus. Yeah. Same mechanism. Same area of your throat used with different levels of closure with your primary vocal cords. I need you, my witness! I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of Zach De La Rocha. Again, he was and is my gateway vocalist. It wasn't until I was able to really dive into and understand on a note-free basis, still dealing with pitch, that I was able to unpack some of my other favorite singers. So I hope this encourages you to do the same. Again, check out my video on the channel, Trick Yourself Into Singing Higher. And if you want to take this stuff way deeper, be sure to click the link below and join my free vocal course. Let me know what other vocalists you'd like me to cover on the channel, and we'll see you for more.